Hey everybody, I'm John from A Guy in His Games. Let's talk about Death Stranding. Okay, so up until this point, I've made a lot of videos, a lot of time and effort have gone into them uh, to defend and praise Death Stranding and Kojima's vision. Now, in order to get my videos down to a shorter time limit so people can process them more and they're easier to watch, I will state to you that I am not a Kojima apologist in the slightest. I don't think he shits out gold bricks and he does have an inflated sense of ego. He's an tour, and sometimes tours can have self-indulgent personalities, and I do think Kojima suffers from this. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Metal Gear Ground Zeroes and Metal Gear Solid 5, so there are things I don't like that he has made. I do like the previous Metal Gear Solid games. 4 was a bit ropey, but all in all, it gave the fans what they wanted, and as a fan, a long-time fan, it did pay off for me. Not everywhere, but in certain parts, it really did. Um... Yeah, like, and Zone of the Enders 1 and 2, great, fantastic games. So with Death Stranding being a departure from anything Metal Gear Solid, and the fact that he's pulled this sort of thing off before with Zone of the Enders 1 and 2, had me excited. Now, first off, I haven't played the game, I've read a ton of reviews, and I don't base, you know, <laughs> my enjoyment or what I'm going to buy on reviews, solely on reviews. But, when well, you don't have as much money as someone like me, and there's a lot of us out there, or time as well, that's another thing to take in consideration to factor in in order to get a gist of what the complete game is like you have to go to reviews they're free to watch on youtube free to read online so this is a free source that we can go to and get information from and i am someone that will compile a lot of information go through a lot of information just to see if in the end everybody kind of matches up with each other and I get a full picture of what this game is going to be like. Does that mean all reviews are gospel? Of course not. IGN reviewed this game a 6 point something out of 10, um, and then GameSpot reviewed it a 9 out of 10. Now, IGN are, aren't exactly a credible source to go to. They reviewed Alien Isolation, or at least for me personally, they're not a credible source, because they reviewed a game like Alien Isolation and gave it a 7 out of 10. It's way more than a 7 out of 10 game. And dare I say it, the best Alien game to date. The best Alien game ever made. That's my personal view and opinion on the game. But, you know, reviewers have different opinions and views to me, and that's cool. They get paid to do this. It's their job. However, sometimes they're a little bit biased. And I feel like some of these sites and some of these publications are biased, definitely, when it comes to Death Stranding. That's one thing I have noticed. And maybe, just maybe, IGN are the ones that are telling you the truth. The fact that they have all these issues with the game, so they couldn't score it any higher than a 6. God, what an age and a world we live in when IGN actually give a good review. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Here's the thing, you see. All these other publications or sites and reviewers, there's things that don't add up when it comes to the overall score and the issues and problems they had, you know, whilst they were playing the game. There's stuff that doesn't really add up. The fact that they've completed this 60-hour game really, really quickly. I mean, they could have got review codes sent weeks before. But there are things that just don't add up when it comes to explaining what the game's about, talking about the story, you know, and then having these issues and then going, but it's a 10 out of 10. That doesn't add up to me, and that's how I'm looking at things. You are getting a lot of other reviews, though, that are agreeing with IGN score, or at least following on the same lines as IGN score, and the issues that they had with the game. Now, like I said previously, um, I can't go out and buy Call of Duty, and Death Stranding, and the new Need for Speed, and then Shenmue 3, and get all these games. I'd love to, I'd love to be able to just go out and buy all these games whenever I wanted to, but I can't do that. And so I am limited, money-wise, in what I buy. And that's why I have to go and read all these reviews and watch all these uh, review videos in order to find out if this is a game that I'm literally going to be taking a chance on. I might not like it and then I'm stuck with a game that I just don't like. It was the same with Nier because, uh, or Nier Automata because I didn't know if I'd like that game so I, I waited for it to go down in price and then picked it up. And it was the same with Red Dead Redemption 2. I waited for that game to go down in price and then I picked it up like last Christmas I think it was. As luck would have it, they were great games. I enjoy both of them. But it's the same thing with Death Stranding. I'm going to have to wait for this game to go down in price before I pick it up. Have no misconceptions, though. I will be picking this game up and experiencing it for myself. But, you know, time comes into play as well. I don't have as much time as I used to when I was a kid or younger growing up. Um, and this is a 30 to 40 hour game. And I'm not saying Shenmue 3 isn't going to be long. But I'd rather invest my time in Shenmue 3 at this point in time 
than Death Stranding. Now this isn't the type of video where I say I hate Death Stranding because of reviews or I love it because of reviews and it's a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. I genuinely don't know because I haven't played it for myself and I need to play the game for myself in order to base a genuine opinion on it and you know experience the gameplay for myself in order to say if I like it or if I don't. From what I've read gameplay wise it doesn't seem that exciting I'm not gonna lie. Like Kojima did say oh you'll be shocked at how the experience changes so drastically we're doing something that's never been done before and I haven't seen any reviews state that state that fact so that had me a bit worried um yeah and it is just delivering packages and Sam walking around that is it essentially you can build bridges you can build roads and stuff with this 3d chiral printer thing that you get at some point during the game and then 25 hours in you get like a gun or at least a taser or something which just left me feeling a bit meh like you, you get that 25 hours into the game i get that it's not concentrating on combat and stuff like that i get that i really understand that but at the same time like even a taser gun you're not going to be killing people so why don't you give it to to the player like before you know like a lot earlier in instead of 25 bloody hours into the game just to get a flipping taser it's just a bit of a crappy decision from kojima and i haven't played the game but from what i saw you just kind of happen across a bike now they could have had this whole mission where you go and you steal a bike from like i don't know a mule camp or something the mules are basically like these dudes who chase it around and stuff they're like rivals to bridges you know and you could have gone into this camp scoped it out did a whole metal gear solid v type of thing where you scope out the base then you go in infiltrate it you know and steal this bike and that's just breaking up gameplay a little bit you know breaking up the monotony but apparently you don't do anything like that you just deliver packages and walk around this extremely barren environment a good looking environment nonetheless everybody has praised it for its graphics its environment everything but it's still barren with not a lot to do but walk around with these packages and uh, at points you know the reviewers said that you have to kind of stop sam from tripping over and stumbling which happens a lot uh, by pressing the l and r buttons and then waggling the the analog stick to stop him falling over and apparently it's like the smallest little bump will have him kind of falling over and acting like a doofus now i don't know about you but after three or four hours of that i'm gonna get very very irritated on top of that irritation you can't really fast travel easily it's a little bit like red dead redemption 2 in that way where you have to get to certain points and then you can fast travel um, but unlike red dead redemption 2 you don't have a horse so yeah you can get a bike you can get a, a hoverboard but i'm guessing they don't just spawn wherever you have to like you know grab them from a base or just happen across them um so you're walking from one sort of end of the map to another to get to a not city you go to this not city and then you can go down in this lift which initiates a cutscene, which you can skip luckily and then sam goes to sleep which initiates a cutscene, and then sam wakes up which initiates another cutscene. you can skip all this stuff sam has a pee pee does a poo poo has a little shave and the reason why i'm saying it in that way is because kojima is a little bit childlike sometimes in his ideas um so yeah and then eventually you can use uh, fractured like umbrella that that allows you to fast travel you have to go through all that shit just to fast travel that's ridiculous. That's a stupid decision. And a lot of people have said, why doesn't Sam just carry the uh, umbrella on his back as soon as he can carry like stacks and stacks of parcels and things, you know, and crates and all that other shit and uh, ladders or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. So why the hell didn't Kojima think of that? Imagine if you could just fast travel. Oh, there's a thought. Jesus, God forbid. Imagine you could just take the umbrella with you and fast travel whenever you wanted. It wouldn't pad out the game and kojima wants to pad this game out you know so he padded out metal gear solid 5 that went on for way too long and uh, red dead redemption 2 was padded out as well because the whole like you know ending with the, the epilogues for john mars and stuff spoilers for a game that's been out for a year but yeah it does seem to me like kojima's not allowing you those options so you can pad the game out a bit more and so you can walk around for a longer amount of time and that's kind of what red dead did as well like with the whole trains and stagecoaches as fast travel options so yeah similar things here when reading the reviews for death stranding and watching the reviews for death stranding it seems like there's no real life within this world like in red dead redemption 2 you can get hijacked by a bunch of bandits or save people from getting mugged you know rob a stagecoach or, or steam train um in in death stranding you don't have anything like that it's just you sam packages walking that's what reviews have said and there's gonna be a lot of people that get bored very very quickly with that you know with that as an experience so yeah 
Um, Kojima's always wanted to make open world games. He said ever since GTA came out, I think it was like Vice City, uh, the game blew him away and that's when he wanted to just make open world games and he couldn't at the time, but when Metal Gear 5 came around, he made his open world game and it was nowhere near as good as, as the older GTA games or Red Dead Redemption, in my personal opinion. So, you know, he's never succeeded at making a decent open world game in my mind. Um, yeah, he's, you know, he's filled them out with stuff to do, Kind of, I guess, in MGS5, but it's like Death Stranding is a regression of what MGS5 introduced. So there's even less to do in Death Stranding's world, um, even if the the actual like location and the world is more interesting to look at. I don't know how I feel about it at the end of the day. I mean, I could get the game and really understand what he's trying to achieve and create, you know, with this game and with this world and with Sam as a main protagonist and. You know, with Clint, um, Mads Mikkelsen as the antagonist, I could get the game and really en end up enjoying it and liking it. But like I said before, I'm not about to throw down 60 quid to find that out. You know, I'd rather wait for it to, to go down to like 20 quid so I can pick it up and hopefully enjoy it. And if I don't enjoy it, at least I haven't wasted 60 quid. You know, it's only like 20 quid. So that's where I'm at at the moment when it comes to Death Stranding. Um, I still think the... The style of it, the sci-fi that's on show, the world he's created, the characters, voice acting, the, the soundtrack, all of that stuff, just the style of the game, really draws me in. I still think that stuff looks fantastic. But just because a book's got a glossy cover and nice artwork doesn't mean the book's actually going to be any good once you open it. And that's how I feel with Death Stranding. That's where I'm at with Death Stranding. Now, this isn't aimed at everybody, but if you're someone that dislikes a video or has an issue with me not getting the game for the reasons stated in the video, then go eat one of Sam's shit grenades. I have clearly stated why I'm not picking this game up day one. Yes, I covered it etc etc but there is a reason as to why i can't pick this game up day one you know i'm gonna have to wait for it and i will be waiting for it um so yeah like the next game i get will be shenmue 3 and if that turns out to be a load of shit then i won't get shenmue 3 if it turns out to be really really bad then i'm not going to pick up shenmue 3 either um but you know there's some differences with shenmue 3 compared to Death Stranding, you know, I know that it's a, uh, a budgeted game, although I am a bit annoyed that it's a £60 game, that's annoyed me actually quite a bit, it should be like 25 you know, it was a Kickstarter backed project, so to be honest, they shouldn't be charging that much for it, but either way if it turns out to be a return to form, like a lot of people are saying, you know, it feels a lot like the old Shenmue games, then um, I'll be picking it up, you know, no, no arguments, um, Death Stranding I'm going to wait for a little bit, I'm going to wait till it goes down in price and then pick it up, so I'll give you guys my full opinion my thoughts and give you guys a review on the game after i've played it and finished it i'm not sure how to feel about kojima after this i mean he has slipped up a few times before the whole quiet controversy you'll be ashamed of yourselves and you'll eat your words um everybody thought that quiet was transgender you know or chico who had then become a woman and the reason why she showed off so much skin is is to make him feel more like a woman um, because he was transgender. That didn't happen. It was just that she drank water through her skin. Apparently, we were supposed to eat our words and be ashamed of ourselves for that. And I feel like he tried a similar trick with this game where he said, you know, it's going to completely destroy people's expectations. We're doing something that no other game has done before. And that doesn't seem to be the case from the reviews that I've read and seen. Uh, so, yeah, he's still pulling that sort of bullshit which is annoying me and i generally thought that, that all the gameplay that was showed off and the trailers and just everything was almost like a smoke screen i mean it was parts of the game most of them are cinematics and then the other half was like early hours of the gameplay so i thought that it would switch up you know gameplay and game mechanics sort of maybe five hours into the game and come with an experience that was completely different from anything we'd seen so far that doesn't seem to be the case all those memes about you playing as a ups worker have actually come true and uh, everybody who sort of laughed at this game for, the, for those reasons unfortunately that is what you're getting you are essentially playing a ups delivery man um the memes are incredible though you've got to see some of the memes there's one that i really like where you know there's this ups worker and his his colleague says hey so uh, after this what are you doing he says i'm going home to deliver some packages and playing death stranding <laughs> i thought that was a really funny one but yeah unfortunately you know sometimes when you i i wanted to be able to go shame like, this game isn't what you thought it would be. It completely surprised you. And unfortunately, it hasn't. <laughs> it is what you've seen. And that's, yeah, that's where I'm like, okay, I I've got to eat my words and put my hands up and say, okay, I was wrong. In that way. 
but I'm not wrong in like in the style and the sci-fi of everything and the characters and the way that the designs are, are handled all that stuff I absolutely love the music everything like that you know the actual world looks incredible so all that stuff I'm still a fan of definitely like it's just the base gameplay that doesn't seem that interesting god it's just not the year is it for like you know our favorite directors and stuff like I like Kojima that's what I've tried to say before yeah I understand that he has problems and faults who doesn't um and I don't like following blindly but you know Shinji Mikami is the only director that I'll I'll get on board and just follow blindly unless he really creates something crappy but yeah like I do like Kojima it's not it's not like I dislike the guy um and it's it's happening with like Terminator at the moment you know James Cameron he's kind of led people astray and said John Connor's in the film and you know, oh no, there was production problems and there was issues trying to get my point across and all this other crap. And you know he's just spinning you a line. And it's it's kind of like, it's the same thing Kojima does sometimes. He spins you a line, um, believes that his his work is more incredible than it actually is. And I'm a bit sick of that because it's very hypocritical. I can't stand hypocrites. I've probably been a hypocrite myself, you know, but we're not judging me. <laughs> I'm just judging other people. When people are hypocritical, they're spinning people the line like... You know, and they're just going over themselves constantly. Like, I, I'm just done with that. I'm fed up with that sort of stuff, man. It's boring, you know. Also, I try not to be a hypocrite myself. And plus, I'm not on the same money as these two people. Like, they're, they're getting millions and millions for the, for their work. So, yeah, they, you know, they have a bit more of a, a presence than I do, a small little YouTuber in the big sea of YouTubers. So, yeah, I expect more. I definitely expect more. But, um, unfortunately... Like James Cameron, one of my favourite directors, and Hideo Kojima, who's made some of my favourite games, you know, Metal Gear Solid and Zone of the Enders. It's just like they're going through the motions at this point, and that is disappointing. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. I'm sure I'll get a few dislikes, but I don't care. Like, it's part of the territory. It's what happens when you make a YouTube video and express your opinion. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep updated with any more content that I upload. And until next time, I've been John from A Guy in His Games. And it's my pleasure to wish you all a very good day and uh, a very good night as well. Peace.